Hey guys, Girl in Red here. I just did an interview at the Zach Sang show, which was kind of hard to say. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we talked about a whole lot of different things, including um, music and pancakes, uh, gaining weight, you know, anxiety, all that shit. So really tune in and chill with us. Bye. Uh, anyway, hi, beautiful human. Uh, I'm Zach. This is Dan. And welcome to the studio. Girl in red. Thank you, guys. How are you? Is that, like, is that the right way to address you? As girl in girl? red? Yes. Yeah, I guess. Or maybe not in real life. Or like, well, this is real life. Real- <laughs> but like, but like in person, like, I don't know, just like Marie, but in general, like on radio and shit. Oh, girl in red. Yeah. Yeah, nobody out there is gonna be like Serotonin by Marie. Yeah, who That's, who is that girl? You know? Yeah, yeah. Is, is there? Are you one in the same? Truly? Oh, so like I'm like not like. Do you mean like I'm like not hiding behind it like a like a alter ego? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. One in the same. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So like not even an exaggerated version of you, the truest version of you. Well, I feel like maybe. Maybe like two years ago, it might have been like an exact, like a little bit more, but now I'm kind of just like tired. So, like, <laughs> I don't even have that extra gear in me, like, to like go be like, whoa, you know? I'm kind of just like, yeah. So now I feel like it's, I, it, we're even more like submerged, like, we're even more like one. Cause, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just growing up. I don't know. No, I, I isn't that, is that what you want? Do you want to be more in tune or more? I don't know, just I, in sync. Because I get what you're saying. Like, it yeah. really is hard to play an act. It is. It's not a vibe. It's like, if you're having a bad day and then, like, you do an interview or something like that and you're like, okay, so last week I won, like, this Norwegian award, like, you know, some fucking elitist shit. But, you know, it's like, yay. <laughs> Mazel tov. 50, 50 grand. Like, I'll take it. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, but then, like, they were, I had to do an interview and they were like, wow, how do you feel? You just got this award. And I was like, Dude, I'm having like a shit day. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, it's like when good things happen to you, and then like that for like the career, like in your career, and you're supposed to be like happy, but like Marie, so it's good for girl in red, but it's bad. For, like Marie's having a bad time. Like that, I'm not able to like fake happiness anymore. So you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's like, I'm much more in sync now. I'm kind of just like you know what, might be a good day for Girl in Red, but Marie's having a shit time right now. She's been touring for 200 days the past 365 days, and that's just not good for her, so she's not doing well. So therefore, and she's eating pancakes all the time. She's gaining weight. It's not, she's, it's going downhill. Uh, so like, I feel like it's better to be in sync because then I don't have to put on this persona or I don't have to put on this like fake excitement or anything like that. I, I don't think I've deliberately ever done that, but I just think maybe like you know when you like you start getting hype and shit, you kind of just want to be like the be- like the best version of yourself. Totally, and it's it, genius doesn't knock every day. Totally, and being okay with that is powerful because it also I feel like and I want to say something like before I said act like you're not putting on an act, but you 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 could be a more exaggerated version of your truth. Right, yeah, and, and that takes a lot of energy to keep up, regardless. Yeah, um, and I don't want to like when when you people hear act, they think you're constructing something out of nothing, but the reality is like putting energy into an exaggerated version of you takes a lot of time and effort, and it's hard to keep up. But it's also real. I don't know. There's the, the, like being able to let go of that brings out a true reality. I think so. I, I mean, I feel kind of like in a way I almost feel like more confident now and just being like okay I'm just gonna show up and be exactly what I am right now you know what I mean totally so, um and it's also like when you're kind of I don't know when you like you have to be like like let, like I just mentioned I've been like touring for like a, like a large part of this year and it's like on on the road either like you meet like label people or like promo stuff it's like you always have to be like really on like yeah yeah. and i'm i think i'm i think i might be an introvert because like that shit fucking exhausts me so now i'm kind of just like i think i just need to 
chill more so that I'm like not gonna, you know, kill myself. But, well, not actually, but like gradually, you know, just end up in like a bad place. Don't wear yourself down. Yeah, totally. But I think prioritizing is a priority. Dude, you just said something. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not vital for you to give energy to a promo person or a radio station. I don't want to be that guy. Like a lot of those people I know for many years. Yeah. But when the priority at the end of the day is your health and your performance and your art. Yeah. On that totem pole, like shaking hands and kissing babies is just not, it doesn't fall pretty that, that high. Yeah. So, but I, I feel good now, you know? I could have been all like, yeah, like, f like feel like I had to like, you know, be really funny or like impress someone or some shit like that. But like, I don't feel that way now. So that's, that's good. I had pancakes, so I'm really relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> the maple syrup really gets to me. <laughs> I think there's something in your, your, your pancake. Has it always been pancakes? I think so. I actually... Um, you know, I've, I have multiple Instagrams, but like my first original one that I like made in 2012, one of my first picks is like a stack of pancakes. Wow. Like that I'm like, I made myself, you know, like, you know, like the, the, you know, you, you buy the, like the powder that's kind of just like, or pancake mix, I of guess. Of course. And I've just always been, you know, obsessed with it because like it represents like American culture, you know. <laughs> when you think America, you think... <laughs> Pancakes. pancakes you know pancakes like mountain dew like you know oh what's it called uh all my first image like all my first pics on instagram is just like twizzlers uh and then it's like oh well, you know that what's that little like corn candy candy corn okay <laughs> corn. candy corn yes and then it, like a stack of pancakes mountain dew like if i scroll back that's what you see were you manifesting something i don't know i was just i just thought it was really cool like i was obsessed with the u.s when i was a kid so were you posting photos that you were taking of these products? Yeah, because like in Norway or here in America? In in Norway, because like my my grandma, she used to live in Canada, so so like she would bring stuff back, and I'd just be like in awe. I would just I loved candy from the U.S. Wow! But by the way, I have a recent addiction to international snacks and candy. Oh really? Yeah, because okay, the other obsession? way, uh, Japanese Kit Kats right now. Whoa! Oh, I, what's the difference between like? They have crazy flavors. Sis, I don't, oh. are you, I ha, I can share. You share? I do share. I share, I like to share. It's one of my love languages. Wow. I'm like the opposite. I hate sharing. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend, she's like, she's like, you don't want to share anything with me. You don't want to have a dog with me. You don't want to, I'm like, wait, 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 because I have a dog and I'm just like, I love having my own dog. <laughs> so she, and like food, I'm like, you know, if I, if I, oh, is that all the candy right there? I have there's some it's some I think most of it's in the but hallway yeah. sharing is not my love language why uh well I love get, like giving presents like actually on the way here I was planning I'm planning Christmas presents this year my my concept this year is um art so like I want to give um I want to give like presents that have like that are like really nice like really cool presents so for the past two years my christmas concept has been like i'm not giving you a present unless i, I get an idea because i don't want to be like buying shit i fucking hate like per buying shit that's so fucking like whack mm -hmm. it's but like tacky like going out to a mall in my opinion is fucking tacky so <laughs> where do we where do we get clothes then the internet yeah like i don't know Thrift just stores? like goodwill got it not you know? tacky you're right goodwill is it's a goodwill yeah I, I, lots of my clothes are from Goodwill. Like, they're $5. Who, I, who doesn't want a $5 t-shirt? Amen. You know? So, okay. Speaking you, my language. You wouldn't get somebody a gift unless you had, like, this idea. Because yeah. you don't want to go out to a store and be, like, commercialized and drawn in by the man and capitalism. So, we want, like, uniqueness. But this year, it's art. Yeah. I, I, you know, you say you don't like to share, but you do like to give. Yes. So, I just, like, okay, so let's say, uh, like... Okay, one example is like, we go out and I'm like asking my girlfriend, hey, do you want that? And she's like, no, I'm good. Then I get the thing that I asked her if she wanted. Then she comes back to me like, hey, can I have a taste? Like, hey, can I try? I asked you if you want, <laughs> I, I would I would have gotten you your own, own yeah. you know? 
and then we could have two separate and then we could enjoy them together separately but but looking at each other and like having the moment still of course but like and then like so that for me is like you know not really but the other day like maybe like i don't know two weeks ago right before i left for tour i bought this pack of uh this pack of um like m&ms like peanut m&ms and it said like to share on it so i was like you know, I'm trying. I'm trying to share. You know, <laughs> the label <laughs> told really imp- you you had to. <laughs> no, 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 but no, no one's telling me to share except my girlfriend. It's only, but she's the only one who like wants stuff from my plate. You know, but thank God. Yeah, it's just so, her. Of course, you know. Is your girlfriend Hannah? No. Is that a dumb question? It's a really dumb question. <laughs> but <laughs> I have the same question. So, but oh, you had the same question. Yeah. Oh. It's like, you know, there, is, there are a few dumb girl in red questions. It's like, is Hannah real? Is your girlfriend Hannah? How did you get your name? Those are like, I'm ready, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bravery <laughs> exists in that record. That is it fair to say that that record to a girl who may not exist, may exist? She did, like, okay, so Hannah was actually a girl called Sandra. So, but she was in my class, so I couldn't be like, oh, Sandra. So I had to like be something that was quite similar. Oh, Hannah, you know? The same thing. Yeah. It's fair to say that that song changed your life. Yes. I say that. I like, I end all my shows with I Want to Be Your Girlfriend, that song. And I'm always like, this song changed my life. <laughs> and then I play it, you know? It really sets the mood. Because then everyone's like, wow, this is going to be a life-changing song for me too, you know? Do you understand why that song is so powerful in culture and why it sparked a whole i don't know life-changing journey not like not like like when i listen back to it now okay so when we play it live it's like a lot more rock and roll like it goes like way harder uh and i think it sounds better when we play it live now so when i listen to like the recording of it i'm like what like this is like some scrappy fucking sounds like Mm. you know it sounds like what it is, which is just like recordings in Garage Band, like five years ago. So, but I, I don't know, like, I don't know if I get. I don't know. I feel like that's like a like a like sometimes that's like a very normal question to ask artists. Like, why do you think like people like your music? I'm like, bitch, I don't know. Like, it's just like people like things, you know, and it just like resonates. Like, I think that's like kind of like that's the cool thing about music. Like, no one knows why like a hit is like. A hit, but it's it, but it's just like it, like it, it's just like so. It just, I don't know. Some people think they know or like spend their whole life trying to figure it out. Yeah, I would just totally like. But my thing recently is just like to let go of trying to find answer to things. So I'm kind of just like, you know, I don't know why it, like why it works, but it like it does, and then that's like the magic of it. That's like why it's so cool, you know. Were you afraid to release that song? Uh, no, I was actually just lazy, so I didn't put it out for a while, but my mom was like, you need to put it out. It's like, where is that song that you showed me, like, a couple months ago? Uh, and then, like, I just put it out. Plus, like, I did not have an audience back then, and I was, like, promoting it on, like, a fingerboard account. I'm like, I'm a pro fingerboarder, too, you know? <laughs> I'm not joking, guys. The, the, <laughs> I mean, I've seen some of your videos. Yeah. You're very good. I am very, I'm really good. I have, I have a huge fingerboard ramp in my living room. Tech deck. Oh, that's stuff. blasphemy. Don't say, don't, uh, yeah, because the, the shit okay. that I'm using, it's like, Sorry. you know, five ply, it's like veneer, it's like bearings, it's like real trucks and shit. Like you none know? of that plastic stuff. Yeah, not plastic. Mm-hmm. Like tech deck, that's like, you know, the that, the, uh, the, the, the tacky capitalistic view of fingerboarding, <laughs> you know? But like Had Black you, River Ramps, that's like the art of fingerboarding. How'd yeah. you get into that? Um, I was just really into skateboard culture when I was like, younger i used to skate i used to like hang out at, like at the skate park just be that like weird six-year-old that would just like you know i'd just be obsessed with all the older boys and all that stuff and then like fingerboarding was like kind of introduced through skateboarding and is it, do you skateboard still uh not like no not really i'm kind of like every time i leave the house now i'm kind of just like oh this is an opportunity to walk my dog so i just just walk outside all the time now i'd never do anything else i have like three bikes but i never use them now because like i'm just like oh i should walk the dog (gasps) this morning i had i had the the breeder who bred my dog text me and and she was like hey this other dog that i also bred like two years ago 
needs a new home. Oh no, I've had that. Should I get it? To, should I get it? No. What kind of dog you have? It's. A, I have a Bernese Mountain dog. Oh, they're big. They're big. They're huge. I have one, and oh, I might get gosh. two now. Uh, I mean, Zach got a second dog, and it he's was regretting the, that. Decision. It was the worst decision I ever made. Oh, wh- and honestly, why? I got my second dog while I was depressed. So if Marie is eating a lot of pancakes right now and thinks that a dog could fill the void (laughs) that exists, that pancakes just can't manage to fill no matter how much we eat, been there, uh, the dog ain't going to do it. But like, I was going to get a puppy anyways, like next spring, you know, so kind of like this might be a blessing in disguise because now I'm like, I skipped the puppy phase. Well, you know, but he's a dude though. Like it's a dude dog, you know, I got a puppy when I was in a darker space a pancake space Mm -hmm. and (laughs) space (laughs) and uh it's a lot of work he remains to be a lot of work and i love him so it's hard to look him in the eyes and say that i regret him yeah but if i could go back i would do it over yeah i would totally not get the dog okay when should you get him uh february this year Mm -hmm. he turns a year in october oh my dog too october 30th well mine's october 3rd Damn, yeah, that's there's... just like a zero behind your dog. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all it is. Wow. <laughs> okay, so, but you have you had another one before that too. Yeah, he's older. I rescued him uh, from a backyard breeder when he was three or four, and he's like six or seven now. And he was like a lot. So is oh he... no, he was the best. He is the best. And but your new dog is like more work. Oh or... yeah, he's a crazy little puppy. He's nuts, dude. But like, so why was it a bad decision then? Well, they also don't get along all the time. So it, it's really oh. risky and it's just, you know, there's a flow and there's 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 just a way right now. And when you bring in another dog, it's going to disrupt that guaranteed. And they may get along like at first and they may get along long term, but there's still going to be like rocky moments in between. Damn. It's a huge commitment. One dog is a huge commitment. Yeah. But it does change your life, which it did for you. Yeah. It made me, it made, made everything a lot better. But my, my dog is also the first one, like her name is Luna. She turns six now in um, October. And like, she is just like, she's almost human. Like she's like, she's like not even like a dog. She's just perfect. So it I've, is very scary getting another dog. I literally thought the same thing about my Lou. The th- you know. But your dog's also like a hundred pounds, isn't she? Yeah, she's like, well, we don't use pounds in Norway. Oh. So Whatever. I'm like very confused by how you guys measure things like, uh, like we I, don't measure things yeah you're just like it's like shimmer an ounce like it's just like shimmer feet like you just like say some fucking random number and just add these different words like feet and toes and shit um, <laughs> you probably don't use toes but it's still weird <laughs> this country man strange country so do you get into skateboarding <laughs> after your first performance at six years old uh, oh, the the traumatizing ex- uh, performance. Yeah. Oh, I was I was already into skateboarding then, uh, and then I tried the music stuff. What inspired you to start and get up there in the first place? Um, I, well, me and my sister, we used to, I I I used to like, I don't know. I've always been singing, and then I think when me and my sister we've been singing together. Um, and she's really bad. So I, I was always really like encouraged by the fact that I was so much better than her. <laughs> Relative to her, you were I was yeah, superstar. Yeah, completely. So we we would be like singing like high school musical, like, I gotta go my own way. And I'd be like, Mom, which one is better? <laughs> and, I, and she would be like, Marie, you, like, you know that you guys, you, like you're better. So I already knew from like a very young age that I could sing. Uh, and then I think... Um, like that performance that you mentioned that was just like it was like this weird like summer thing like where like summer camp where like the parents like sent their kids there because they still have to work or something Mm -hmm. like that so it was like the end of that so it was like you know you know you know like end of year kind of concerts or whatever at schools and shit so it was like similar to that and then I was like I'm gonna perform but I didn't I wasn't pre- like prepared like for the nerves at all so my voice was like cracking and then I ran off stage crying and it was just like traumatizing but you stopped after that yeah I stopped for like 10 years I could never go back so what brings you back to singing is it writing um uh, do you mean like just artistry after that or? yeah 10 years later yeah so I got my guitar when I was like 14 and then 
I I think like I've always been like very much like drawn into like this like image of like writing and just like being in your own head like you know just like I, I used to I was like very pretentious probably still I am but you know I'm, I'm not just, getting that energy well like I think I I think I'm very pretentious but I'm I know that like I know like I'm self-aware enough to be like that's cringy but you know what I'm like mm-hmm. you know like but are you self-aware enough to be pretentious because it, the shoe fits or like I I wouldn't say I'm pretentious like I, honestly I don't even I don't even know like how can you honestly I'm I'm very like baffled if if like do like pretentious people exist without even know they're pretentious like or like I, I mean I go to like coffee places that like serve like like speciality coffee and shit like that in itself is kind of like you know bougie fucking like douche yeah you know and like i i like good coffee like i have a v60 thing back home like i you know i like making good coffee and that in itself you know that's like that's, <laughs> the universal side of good coffee <laughs> the people who know they, they, they you know. know i have like a like a i don't know i'm like i'm into like you know natural wine like orange wine like all that shit is fucking like pretentious you know for like the average person but then in like my world and you know i live up like i like the part of also i live in is like the equivalent of like williamsburg so it's very like you know it's all about natural wine and all that shit <laughs> so therefore i but i'm aware of all that shit and also i'm aware that so in a way i wouldn't say i'm pretentious but also i do prefer those things you know your art gives off something so incredibly relatable thanks man the opposite of pretentious may be relatable, right? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I think people could probably relate to the pre- pretentious stuff I just totally. said, too. Well, I think everybody has their own things, right? Yeah. And Everyone's, that... like, some people don't give a shit about coffee. Some people are like, I want to find the good coffee well, place. And then some people care about, I don't know, random things, like fucking socks or, like... The, Completely. The, I care about socks, you know? Yeah. People have 100% their... 100% cotton socks, unless you want to have smelly feet, you know? Duh. <laughs> Exactly. Are you still writing all of your music in your bedroom? Not my bedroom anymore. So uh, I bought my first apartment. I don't have a second one, by the way, but my first and only apartment. I don't want to be one of those apartment sharks who just like, yeah, I just got like so much money that I'm going to invest in apartments and like really fuck all my friends over. And I I don't know. Anyways. um, I see them on TikTok. Yeah. uh, um, That's not my vibe. But I got my apartment last year and I'm mostly just writing in there now. So like I have this, you know bigger space and also i have a studio is it a weird transition no not really because i've I've never been like oh i need to write in my room i want to be like a bedroom artist like that's never been my take on it it's just like this is what what i have now you know what i mean can you hear a difference Mm, i don't know i guess i i hear a difference i don't think it has anything to do with the space i think it's mostly just because like i'm different now than i was like five years ago four years ago you know yeah, you're living a different life. Yeah, I'm eating more pancakes too. So it's just like the songs are really different. Well, you mentioned that like Will You Be My Girlfriend was made on GarageBand. Yeah. There is something special to that. And that I mean that's on the New York Times one of the best songs of all time list. Yeah. So John, John Carmonica. We love Adam. John. Yeah, he's such a cool guy. He's he just did a profile on us in the show. Yeah, he did. He did. Wow. Yeah, he, I spent. Was the that day. pretentious to say? No, I'm no, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, uh, also, I mean, pretentious isn't always necessarily bad. Like, if you're pretentious and rude, then like, you know, that's bad. But like, you can still have these like tendencies, and it doesn't need to be a bad thing. But I think you know, it's really cool that he did a piece on you, because like, I I watched this. You know, the if I get videos of the show on my TikTok for you page and I'm like I feel like it's always just a good vibe you know I feel like the artists that sit here really just like don't put on like a persona that we talked about earlier uh, which is good so that song is made on GarageBand yeah. it's noted as one of the best songs of all time there's no want for you to just attach yourself to the exact same way that you made that maybe not in formula yeah. but in terms of like energy or routine or do you like whether it be space or the type of computer you use or the microphone that you use? Do you mean like how I can like connect with that same energy or? Yeah, like, like I don't think I can. Like I'm nuts. Like I've only used this microphone for years. What mic is it? Uh, this is a sh- uh, this is a roadcaster, a road broadcaster microphone that I've stolen and taken with me from a bunch of different radio groups. Yeah. Because like I don't feel like I can do it in front of anything else. Oh really? Yeah, I'm crazy like that. Crazy like that. 
<laughs> such a wild card. Uh, but uh, like, what was the last song you made in your bedroom? Wow. I mean, like my bedroom. Like the thing is, like bedroom is such like a it's a teenage thing. Yeah, you know, it's like when you like. I, th- I guess like the last song I made that is, was like put out into the world was like maybe bad idea which is a song that I put out in September 2019 and that I finished uh in my room and like on tour um but like and then in 2020 I went into a, like a professional recording studio and then I finished all the my bedroom demos in like a professional studio and then the album came out last year and then yeah like I just like the bedroom really is like a teenage thing or maybe when you move out maybe to like an apartment like with your friends and stuff and then you have your bedroom but now like I just have like my living room and also I'm like a lot more like I want to have I want to go out and then I want to go into a studio I like because when when this becomes like your full-time thing like rolling out of bed and then just like sitting like in your room by your desk becomes like it messes with your brain it's like but i I was just sleeping here and relaxing totally here get that. and then like and now i'm supposed to be like working here and like that doesn't like when you do that over a long period of time it really messes like with your headspace of like so it's like when i go to when i used to go to bed in my bedroom i would be like but like i work in this room you yeah. know so it restricts your creativity you can only think so much in the same space yeah and i so it's i think it's good to like get out and and walk into a room and be like in this room I put my phone down and I create and I try to be present and I try to not give up on this fucking recording or or like you know that kind of mentality and then then and then you can leave I think it's being able to leave is as important to being able to go in you know because yeah so you put a period you can live a life yeah come back with fresh inspiration 100% so so now like the bedroom for me really isn't a thing anymore it's just like i have a piano in my living room i love playing there and i that's where i'm like mostly making my new stuff right now so you know just having instruments around you just allow you to just like do whatever anytime then i have like and i have it like a tiny office upstairs so i have two floors the bedrooms upstairs and the living room and kitchen downstairs and then um uh, and then i can go in there sometimes if i want to do something but as of right now it's just a fucking mess in there. So it's not really a very productive room. Do you have another album ready to go? Ready to go? No. Not not at all. Like how many like at any given time I have like, like I have like 13 demos that I'm okay. that I'm uh, working on and that I'm uh, like when I get back from this tour, I'm going to go into the studio and start like um developing those ideas. But I mean, I, I put my record out last year and and honestly I haven't had anything to say which is which has been a a very a big problem in my life because I feel like often in like if I've like done interviews or all that shit it's like wow like what what you're saying is so important I'm like bitch you you should know that right now I have nothing to say you know but that's okay yes now I'm now I'm okay with it because I've been just been living life like I've established my home life I got a dog car apartment girlfriend that you won't share with oh yeah yeah i won't <laughs> not sh- not sharing but i'm working on it you know getting the m&ms you know that was a really big step for me usually i'd be like don't even touch him but um i'm i'm not greedy but i'm just kind of like you know i will share with her but then it's like oh, damn get your own shit but, but do you feel like your music is going to be more attached to what you're going through now which is more of a balanced or maturity or a I don't know yeah, stability. Yeah, the record is called No Sharing. Yeah. So <laughs> no, it's I I think definitely it's going to be more about uh, finding stability and being more uh, happy and centered and maybe just like like my first one was kind of more like I'm fucking depressed and like every my love relationships are terrible. I haven't had sex. It's all shit. So horny. Uh, like de- like depression, all that shit. You know. <laughs> Uh, but now it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm having regular sex. So it's just like, you know, stability, house, dog, car. 
Yeah. How interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting. <laughs> Do you not think a happy album would be good? I think a happy album is really good because the happy album is what's real right now, you know? And the thing is, happy albums, they don't. it doesn't need to be... And it doesn't need to be that. You know, it can be also be like... It can be cool. So, yeah. I... If I can make you go quiet, yeah. an exceptional body of work. Thanks, man. You get out everything you need to say, which is vital and important and healthy. Yeah. Did it exceed your expectations? Did you set expectations or goals for the album? I think, uh, like, when I was making it, I was like, I want this shit to take over the world. And then, like, I eventually then I was like, honestly, as long as, like, a door opens for me, I'm really excited and I'm happy and like doors like opportunities you know so that like it's not like I put this out and then it disappears and if anything I feel like it hasn't disappeared at all I feel like it's continuing to grow and like it's really gotten like you know people have like really like people really like it um so I feel like my expectations I think I definitely lowered my expectations just because I didn't want to be disappointed you know 100% and I think people like it, but they also feel understood by it. Well, that I can't really say. Uh, I can't speak for other people, but I've definitely heard that, you know, people, you know, they like the record and they think certain songs, you know, I don't know, they relate to it or some shit like that. People use, do you listen to Girl in Red as like a way to ask if somebody's queer? That's another one of those, by the way. <laughs> no, but it is true. <laughs> yeah, well, but the thing is, that thing was like, it was a TikTok trend. I don't think people do that anymore. Yeah, but even if it was for a time, there's still a feeling of understanding. Uh, I guess. Like, but not, like, it's funny because that, like, it's like, it was, for a time, people, I feel like it was a thing. But now it's kind of like, oh, do you remember that? Th you remember that, like, big, do you listen to Girl in Red thing when I put the posters up all over the world and shit? And like put it up in like Brazil and and people like went like that people like actively like they we, pulled up to the posters and took pictures in wait, front of you it. put the posters up yourself yeah well n not me like like all over the world like <laughs> being like hey put me on a private jet I got some posters <laughs> picturing you like with like the the rolling thing <laughs> no we 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 had people you know but it was it was our like oh thing. I didn't know that it was your campaign so I'm understanding it more yeah so the, okay so the thing is like it 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 occurred in like pop culture as its own real thing and then we were like wow this is this is like people are actually using this phrase right now to be like to be like hey do you listen to girl in red it's kind of like hey do you like women or whatever but then we were also like this is also a really fun campaign because it's like for a person who doesn't know about that is like do you listen to girl in red like no who's that yeah. you know it's it's also just a yes or no question uh, so um, it's like, but we made it like a big thing, and then we act deliberately put it up in cities where LGBTQ plus like policies or like are like restrictive or maybe even like you, you know super right wing, you know leaders like in Brazil or Poland. It's still pretty fucking cool to do. I it w it was really cool like when we did it, but for me like I'm always gonna be like okay. You know, we gotta like keep the like. I gotta like. I'm always, I'm always gonna want to be doing like the next thing. Yeah, it's not about what was; it's about what isn't going to be. Yeah. So sometimes when people like, oh, you had this trend, or like, then I'm kind of like, yeah, I know, but like, I, I, I don't want people to think that that I, I, I want to bring up like the past all the time. You know. Yeah. Uh, but like, I definitely acknowledge it as like a really cool cultural moment, and then. I feel like I'm using my hands a lot more than I usually do. I'm like, but cultural it, moment? I'm like grabbing like a boob. Like, I don't know. But is that attached to you feeling defined by like what has been and like a fear of like topping yourself? Mm. That might... I'm not sure if it, it's like uh, topping like... or like. I'm not sure if it's like the peak, but I definitely feel like some people really put a lot more like weight on certain moments than I do. So like, let's say... The do you listen to girl in red moment like that for me was like a really cool moment i was like let's put the posters up here and there blah 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 and like and i definitely wanted to do a thing out of it but then like you know i also like i i guess it's just weird how much some people weigh like certain things 
You know what I mean? I like, understand. So it's probably like also you know maybe or just like we fell in love in october or like some like wait i actually shouldn't say anything about the song because i'm putting out like a sequel to that song in like october well actually right after this i'm gonna go into the studio and try to finish it because the words are not coming to me man it's going really slow but i'm putting out a sequel to that song but it's just like i don't want people to like define me like it feels really bad i totally understand that yeah i'm gonna move back to music yeah. you mentioned that like you push yourself to finish songs. Yeah. Is that new? Like, would you just, like, if you didn't feel it, move on from something? Oh, I haven't finished a song in so long. I've, but, like I said, I haven't had anything to say, so it's like, it's been like, what am I pushing myself for? I don't even know, like, the direction for this. But, but uh, even the record that you're working on now, like, you could have bailed on it. Yeah, I, well, I can't. <laughs> like, I've signed a record deal now, so I, I, I'm feeling a lot of pressure. Like, even right now, I'm just like, I'm, I'm getting a little bit sweaty thinking about it. Yeah, but what, it, you, ha you signed a record deal to release art, but not art on a tight deadline. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but I, f I still feel like th that's the, like the weird thing about being an artist is like, that's like, that's the mentality I want to have. I like, I don't want to, I don't want to make art on a deadline, but also you don't want to be like kind of oblivious to like that time pass, you totally. know? Totally. So like. Yeah, but you're on tour. You, you're, are you, what, are you afraid of not being relevant? Uh, I think any artist is, you know, is always going to have that, like, you know, I think any artist wants to be relevant, you know, uh, and unfortunately, I feel like I often see artists not be relevant anymore, and I feel like they're, what they're bringing to the conversation isn't really exciting or all that shit, so I, I, I definitely want to take... But then it, it can be really counterproductive to be like, oh, gotta get the record out, and then it sucks, and yeah. then like, you know, so. You don't want to force yourself, especially this this last album, so it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, and I, 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 I think you're doing, like I did myself good by putting all that effort into that record because that, in a way, that buys you more time yeah. to make more, like Phoebe Bridges put out like Stranger in the Alps in 2017, amazing record didn't put out a record in, until th three years later in 2020 and that's okay and new record amazing you know i'm such a big phoebe bridges fan like uh, i've met her a couple times and every time i go up to her i feel like the worst shit ever because i'm just like i'm just like hey phoebe just want to say hi because <laughs> i'm just i'm just a really big fan um but like she if you if you make good stuff then like you buy yourself more time so with this new record i'm never gonna let time define or I, I'm always gonna let uh, like I'm always gonna make the best art hopefully but also it's just like having time in mind is also important because I think you know this kind of like way of like touring and then coming back home like just being an artist is a very floaty ex like existence yeah. so if you don't push yourself with that like I need to get this shit done then you know, you have to set guardrails. You you could literally float and do nothing. Like you could just totally. have checks come in and you could do. You, yeah, I could just like wait for royalties yeah. every second month and then like be like, ah, oh, it's okay. But then again, like it's not. I realized that I don't think money is cool either. Like what's cool is doing something, changing culture, or like having a, a say in what's cool, like in culture. Like, and I don't know. That's like let's say Taylor Swift, like if she was like an artist for money, then she wouldn't have made 10 fucking records, you know, or 11. I don't know. She's putting out a new one yeah. now, you know, or my, this might be the 10th one. I don't know, but like, or 11th, but, and I, I really, I strongly admire that because like, I could have just been having this floaty like existence, just waiting for the royalty to come in and then be like, yeah. And, but like, that's not cool. Cause like, what's cool is like making stuff and you know, impacting something in a cool way but you've done that and you've done it if i can make it go quiet sonically is superb like, thanks man it's unlike anything i've ever heard before really yeah truly you've heard a lot of records probably yeah why are you surprised when i say that i don't know because like i I don't know. I, honestly, I think I just have a strong. I think I have imposter syndrome, quite a heavy bit of it, like a like a serious case of it. So sometimes, uh, like, and even also like just being like I live in Norway, so I'm very like I'm You're not moved. 
Well, you're kind of removed from uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, Hollywood. I'm, re- mm-hmm. I'm removed from Hollywood. I'm not into this shit, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm so like, I'm not into this whole like LA bubble or anything uh, like that. How did you meet Phineas? Uh, well, we met at a, like a festival in Europe and then uh, that was the first time. And then uh, I think I met him some other time too. And um, then we were just like zooming when we did the, when, when we did the song together. But he's a great guy. Yeah, he's really he's really cool, and he's really tall too. Has a deep voice. <laughs> um, those were not anything about him as as, as a character, but uh, but yeah, but like so. Have I mean? It was kind of I was like joking around like with my friends, like wow, I'm having like some big Hollywood man on my record because like he's like he's like born and raised in L.A. And, yeah. like he's very like he is Hollywood, you know. But, but he added something to that song. Yeah, he added some really cool synths and like some really cool percussion stuff and like some small melodies and he was like he did some vocal dubs uh on the outro and yeah, and also just having him being like this is a fucking cool record like I really want to put like work on that song with you. I, that song is a journey. I love that song so I, much. It, I, and the fact that it was a hit, like a real fucking hit. Yeah. Talking about serotonin. Right, that like that was a fucking like it is. <sighs> it's a such it's such a cool song. It, it's so many ups and downs. It, yeah, it, it like the production matches your story and the lyrics so perfectly. Yeah, it's it's like a one off. I'm not gonna lie, I listen to my record quite a bit, <laughs> and every time I listen to it, I'm like, it's fucking cool. It's like it's such a cool re- song. It's just like. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, who who the fuck made that? You know, like that, you did. I know, but then like that song at some point didn't exist, but now like it does, and I think that's so cool. Is that the w- one of the most? W- what's the most rewarding part about this whole thing? Um, like making making music and stuff. Yeah, I think like just finding that cool, like finding something special in a song. When like when you're in the studio working on a song, like let's say serotonin, it was like when I, when I when I was starting to figure out that this was going to be like I was going to like dive into this rap thing after the beginning of the song. It was going to be like really kind of like dark, but then like light in the like it's like when you get that when you get excited, essentially it's like when you get excited about what you're making. I think that's like the oh sorry, uh, like the biggest and coolest thing ever because that's like. I I don't get truly excited about a, about a lot of things, you know. But when you feel it, you know. Yeah, then that, that's like that's when you know that whatever this is, it's really fucking good. Will you come in to the studio with what you want to do, or do you go into the studio blank slate? Like when, um, I I know what I want to do because usually when I come into the studio, I I've already have a a piece of uh, music that I've already developed. So usually I produce stuff in my studio or home or whatever oh, where wow. I am and then uh, and then I already have the song DNA I'm already excited about something and I'm like I think there's a really fucking good idea here I want to work on this so when you're alone making music what comes first is it a story or something you want to tell or a lyric or a production I feel like recently it's mostly production and and top like melodies and and stuff I have a lot of gibberish uh di- gibberish demos like with cool top lines but it's you know I I haven't had the words because I think I I think I I just haven't they haven't been coming to me as easily. So will you just record and just say anything or Yeah, just... I'll just like sing the melody and then like come up with some kind of sounding American words, you know, and then uh but I've been like getting like some Norwegian lyric ideas recently which sometimes scares me because I'm like Oh, this is what happened five years ago because I used to make Norwegian music, and then like I was like, the, but now I'm getting English ideas and shit. So now I'm like, oh my god, what if like I had a five t- five year period of English songs? And now they're gone. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand how you make a song. Like, will you just like record and like because there's a part in Serotonin that was supposed to be a placeholder, but will you do gibberish over production, or will you just do gibberish with nothing, and then make production to the gibberish? Oh, I, 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 I think there's, like, I do production and then gibberish as in, like, this will be lyrics at some point. Yes. So, like, recently I've just, like, been producing ideas and then, like, I record vocals as if, like, they were real words, kind of. Uh, because then you take the words to match it with 
with whatever I'm like producing yeah. and stuff and the melodies. But um, the words definitely, whatever you're saying, also definitely that definitely also changes like so when i get the words right for the for this record and everything i definitely think that's gonna it, it changes the production too like the intensity and like the dynamic of the production changes with what you're singing and how you're singing it too so it's honestly it's just like you can't do one thing so like so, when someone's like oh do you start out with that or it's like you just start somewhere but then like everything plays in part like everything has its own part and everything is like equally as important to make like a full body of work you know so uh yeah but i'm kind of just like i travel with like a peli case with that's like a portable studio and um i kind of just like do i do all, everything at the same time that's kind of like the perks of you know that's kind of how i like i write songs i produce them and sing them and write them at the same time you know you do it all yourself. Yeah, but then also I have, you know, people that I trust and people that I like to bring into the process, like Matthias on, on this first record, Matthias Tellis. Because making a whole record by yourself is like, no one does that. You can't yeah. do that. Even, like, I'm like a very, like, me, 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 I'll do everything. But, like, even I was like, I don't think, I've, I don't even think I will enjoy making it all by myself. Like, it's a very lonely experience. So you, you I think anyone should bring another, per, should bring other people into their process. How do you know record. he was right? I didn't know, but I, we, we, we hung out and we made one song together. Or like I had a song and I was like, I know where I want to take this sonically and everything. It was called Midnight Love. It's on the record. And that was like the first, like, let's see if it's a vibe. And then we just like really hit it off. And I had so much fun with him and we were just like mostly laughing and hanging out. And now he's like a really, really great friend and I really trust him. So I didn't know if he was right, but it was kind of like, you're never gonna know anything in life if, if it's right or not, unless you just like do it, so. Will he be a constant moving forward? I, I definitely, like when I go into the studio in October, I'm gonna be visiting him in Bergen because I think I don't know. Like, I don't want my second my second record to be like the exact same process, but I also I feel like it's not. I I think it's like good to start somewhere familiar and then maybe like mm. you know figure things out and then I'll be like okay. Also, I'm gonna hang out with Aaron Desner, and I, I met him last year. I was at the Pond Studio for like a couple of days, and then I um I'm this song that I'm gonna put out next month is also something I made with him and then I'm gonna meet him in the beginning of October hang out there for a week and a half or something scary to release a song scary yes <laughs> very scared to release a song I haven't but the, the good thing is like it's um, like I have this we found love in October universe and it's kind of just like uh, it's a sequel to that song so I'm just building on that story and making a music video building on that story so it's not really like first release since uh, uh, new record like you know new album coming out like be on the watch out like it's not gonna be like that you know it's kind of just like I just I think but I think it's I don't know maybe it's like a little bit Taylor Swift inspired kind of like she she creates these stories and then she builds on them and then she she doesn't just like I don't know I think that's it's cool like I, I've made this like We Fell in Love in October like enters like the billboard chart every single October so like it's kind of a thing it's a fun thing yeah. just like you know you're building off of it it's 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 a universe of your creation yeah and it's kind of like a perk like a lot of people like make a big song and then like but it was just a big song it wasn't something it's not a big song every single you know mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's really like a pri pri blah, 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 privilege to have something like a song like that you know does a song like we found love in october take on new meeting every year meaning yeah new, like to you does it change from when you first originally made it so i've actually i'm kind of like done with we fell alone in october and i think that's what it's fun for me to make a new song because the new song has my new take on what that was for me at the time yeah. so we fell alone in october was i was with this girl she was my first ever girlfriend it was kind of me like declaring that love being like my girl my girl like like for me but like sonically and everything like that i'm done with that song you know it's like it's a really old song for me like it doesn't do anything for me so this new song is kind of just like um is my take on where i am like emotionally with that situation which is like she's my ex 
we're done we're never going to be anything again kind of uh but sonically also just like musically i'm kind of entering that like fall vibe uh so this new song is kind of my, what we feel in october would be for me now and if that makes sense totally so the music video is going to be like you know the actors are like 20 years older it's kind of like a continuation of that story that's really creative and a cool challenge well it's it's just you know fun to be doing something <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> does does making music kind of feel like a job sometimes nowadays? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, I think the first twenty five percent is like really fun in the studio, and then the rest is like, you know, fucking just pushing. Like you mentioned, just like pushing to finish that fucking song. I think a lot of it becomes work, and then like just the mixing and stuff. But you know, it's just really fucking good when you have like over, like like nothing like I actually like have I have two vinyls with all my music on it like <laughs> like I have the like my two first EPs on a, like a collective like like vinyl and then the record is like that's insane you know it's so cool so it's definitely a job but you know I would have to have another job too if yeah. it wasn't for that job how does your sister feel about this whole thing my sister she also used to sing uh yeah she's like you know feel like i really stole her career <laughs> no she's she's um she's good i think um you know it, there, there's a lot of talk about me in like in our family or you know shit like that like of my course. dad i don't really talk that much with my dad we don't have a great relationship but uh, like he made a Christmas card where, and he was like, "Yeah, Marie is doing really great with her music and all that." Like he was just like, "She got these th this award and that award," and then he's like, "And Tina, she's struggling with the studies in Oslo. Like she's struggling with, uh, with the you know s school in Oslo. And like she got this tiny little section of that like Christmas family card, uh, and where he was like, she's struggling at school." which is like she's not really struggling it's just like <laughs> you share that with everybody yeah it's just just really weird so like i think definitely she's maybe i don't know but she's she's honestly my best friend she lives with me she helps me with my dog um but now she's gonna move out i think we've hit our breaking point it is hard though to be a sibling of somebody who's you're, you you figured out what you want to do. You're yeah. building stability. You're building a career. You have incredible bodies of work under your belt, and it's still just the beginning. It is rough. It is like not. It, it my situation's different, but my sister had a very difficult time. Yeah. Yeah, just hanging around and watching it while she didn't really know what she wanted to do and I, struggled to figure it out. And I think like even if you're, it's not even if it's like not your sister and like even just like having I think being friend if you're someone who just like you don't know where you want to go in life and maybe you really wish you knew yeah. then I think just seeing other people knowing what they want to do is always going to suck you know especially when you're so young yeah I yeah and she's like my, my sister is like a couple years older than me so I think her like she's been studying different things now for like seven years she's finally done now she just got a new job so she's like really you know changing up her life and, and doing like things to better it but uh, I definitely think that you know seeing her younger sister really like like getting my apartment getting like my girlfriend in my car like this like job figuring things out I think also like or just like getting settled getting a bunch of new friends in Oslo or around the world that that's while she's like struggling you know it's never fun to feel like you're not successful or oh. And, and successful is like relative yeah. so that could just be like feeling like you're able to like wake up every single day and just like manage the day it's like it, it sucks but she's doing better now and she's like she's getting all the help she needs and stuff so but recently I'm the one that's going downhill yeah, mentally you're so, eating the pancakes yeah I'm eating the pancakes <laughs> so, you know she's eating the greens so you know it's it's always weird but it's a uh, pendulum dude it goes yeah. back and forth and Dude, that's like that's scary, man. I hate that. I hate that. It, it's like you're but, doing good, but then like you you can easily go downhill again. There's balance though, and yeah. I think balance comes in all shapes and sizes, and is sparked by a bunch of different things, and it's different for everybody. Yeah. I I also don't think you should pressure yourself to make another album. You should do it on your terms when you're ready. And I only say that because you're you're pretty incredible. 
Thanks, you're, ex- dude. you're exceptionally talented, like really, truly a gift and uh, a Damn. great light in music in our world and culture. Really, you're shaping it in the most positive and organic, beautiful way. Really That's, special shit. I, I really appreciate that. And that's it's cool to hear that other people think s- certain things like th- that uh but you know and i'm not alone i mean you know taylor swift is out there yeah she's out there she she's, likes you she's in my email inbox i love taylor swift i'm such Casual. a big fan i'm i i have like you know dreams of like arriving at lax and then like some guy just being like get in the car and i was like what <laughs> and i'll be like and then she and then, he'll, and then he'll be like just get in the car and i'm like okay and then i'll get in there and like he drives me up to like taylor swift's house or some shit you know it could happen dude it, it's like it's a fantasy manifest it right here on our couch i'm manifesting right here rub the rub the cat i'm rubbing the cat <laughs> hey cat no but seriously that would be so cool but i'm not going to pressure myself to make another record but i am but it's but i'm feeling that it's coming to me now and i'm 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 getting more inspired and i have i already know what i want the first song to be and it's it's the most beautiful song i've ever heard in my life go go live this life that you've I already know the new title. I, I, it's it's, it's and it being will developed. Come. See, dude, I'll make sure that you get a copy of the record before Please. it comes out. Are you getting that exciting feeling from all these new demos you're making? Yes. With the new album? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm getting like really excited. Especially, I'm. I'm getting even more excited thinking that I'm gonna have all this time to make it and be excited too. So, um, but like, I'm. I'm definitely getting really excited. And also, if you can't. I don't know, but I think like the next record is going to be even better than the first one. Hell yeah! And that's 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 a lot to put out there, but like, I, why the fuck would you make a bad one? You know, don't it, make a bad record. <laughs> but but with that comes time. Don't rush yourself. I'm when not gonna you, rush myself. Like, how do you know when a song is done and ready to go out? It's like you stop hearing things. That's like interesting yeah so like when you when you make a song then it's like when you constantly feel like oh, i need to I, like you can but like you hear that it's it's just like you know like it's just like you hear when when you need to add something and then like when you listen all the way through without being like bothered or like you're not like whoa that that that, that didn't sit right with me you know that's when you know like when you uh when you stop hearing things yeah when you can't fix it anymore yeah when you when it's like oh but it's all good now and then like and when it's all when it all just makes sense also i like to think that a song is done when it sounds like something someone else made or, or like you know like when when some when it's like when it sounds like it's already it's always been a song you know i understand what you're saying so it's like when you listen to a record when when i listen to like a popular like i don't know like let's say stay by you know kid Leroy. it's like i don't hear I don't hear anything I need to change in that song. So as a from a like producer ear, they filled all the gaps, you know, they they filled all the blanks in the song. So that's like it's just like filling all the blanks essentially and then so that you can listen without being like annoyed. When serotonin was being made, did you listen and you're like there's something missing and that's why you took the Phineas? Uh so w- with that song, it was like it was maybe the worst song to ever make. It was so hard to make. Uh it started it started with like the core it started with what it is now and then i strayed away from it made 13 other versions that completely lost the essence and i was just like fit i was like i was losing myself i was losing the song i was just like what's happening like uh but then we came back to this version was which was like the version three but it was kind of like the essence of this and then uh me and matthias we kept making we kept developing it and then we were like it still needs a little bit of like an umph like "Mm." and that's that's when we sent it to phineas and he added these like cool synths and but like it it had like the core kind of there but then like he 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 gave some notes here and there and he he also suggested that i kept the like the gibberish part before the first chorus and that's like i mean that's a major part of point of character right it's it's super fun yeah and also like I don't even think I could have filled that gap with any words because I I didn't have anything else to say there, you know. So the fact that it was just gibberish was just like, you know. Do you did you need the thirteen other versions to get to where you ended up? I think so. I think I I think it's like I I kind of call like I I like to call music making for kind of like 
uh, like like solving songs. There, it's like a song is like a mystery, and you have to solve it to to come with to have the best version. And I think like if you're solving a case, you probably have you have to go a long route to end up solving like who's the murder or uh-huh. whatever. You know what I mean? So kind of like solving that song w- meant that I had to rule out all these other songs. It's not going to be that direction. And then we came back to that song. That's like, you know, that's where I got, like, this was the version that made me excited. This is the version that it needs to be. So it's kind of just like, songs are really mysteries, you know? They're, that's like why it's so cool to, to be able to just like, I don't know, explore it. Also like the same with mixes, you know, you get like a gazillion mixes, but you know, you gotta like find the right one that's like, makes the song sounds like the song it's supposed to be yeah. and it makes it really change it, it can make or break something yeah it totally I've, I've heard so many bad mixes where i've been like you don't get the song you don't get what the song is supposed to be uh, and like we've had other people mix it instead you know so do you still have music hidden on spotify hidden yeah oh do you mean like my playlists and stuff yeah, I I, I see this in my notes. My personal playlist. It says, "Does she still have music hidden on Spotify that she doesn't want anyone to find?" Oh, do you mean like my music that I put out? Yeah, I guess. Well, I have I have Norwegian music that's out on Spotify, but it's like not hidden because it's on the it's under my real name, Marie Olven. And then again, who's, who's that? You know, <laughs> don't <laughs> never call heard me. of her. Yeah, never heard of her. <laughs> uh, so, but that's still out there, which is Norwegian, and. I wouldn't say it's hidden, but I I wouldn't like suggest anyone so, listening. Yeah, like like don't run, just walk. Yeah, to go check it out. yeah, don't you know? It's take your time. No rush, but I like to keep it there because it's like a fun, like this journey has been really long. Like it's been a long journey, and I I think it's cool that like I started out in like a small town in Norway, absolutely no connections to the music industry whatsoever, and that music that's out there is just like a part of that journey like authentic journey like you know you need that need to get out there and touch the ears that it did to bring you any sort of notoriety and help change your life correct well the 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 first music didn't do anything for me that's what's why why it's funny to have it there because like it didn't connect with people the same way that my 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 like girl in red music did so i think it's fun to have it there because like before behind any successful artist are a lot of miserable songs and are like bad songs and I think uh, you know I had to make a lot of I've made a lot of bad songs that no one has ever heard and I've made I had another music project that no one that never that you know that never connected with anyone the same way that this project did and I think it's that's really cool because I tried something and I failed at it you know and I was really young, so it's like there was no pressure. I was like living at home, but but did you fail or did you learn? That's that's that, that's what I mean. Like I I learned. I learned uh. that that didn't work, and that I wanted I want to be better, and I wanna I wanna I want people to hear my music because it feels like shit when they don't, you know. So yeah, I just I it's I like to have it there because it's like it's just so cool having like documented this long journey which started like. I don't know, soon, like 10 years ago. And it's still just the beginning. I personally feel like it's just the beginning, you know? You have to feel that way. Because sometimes, like, you can, when you've been doing something for a long time, yeah, you can feel uh, just monotonous. Yeah. But I'm, 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 I feel like, well, last year in September, so just exactly like a year ago, I was in the U.S. for a month, and I did a bunch of label meetings, and because uh, I was like, we were trying to figure out, like, what's next. And ever since that month and ever since that trip here i've felt like i'm just this is just the beginning for girl in red because the music that i have now that i'm sitting on right now my demos i feel like they're even more global and i feel like they're even more exciting and and more beautiful than my other stuff and i and just signing to columbia you know betsy from columbia is in this other room and like having ron uh, from columbia loving my music is just like it's really it's really special and so I, I'm just so grateful and also really excited about feeling like it's the beginning you know like that's the honestly I think that's the 
best thing any artist could ever feel. It's like when they don't feel tied down, they don't feel like they have made the wrong management decision. They don't feel like they're not getting the payment they wanted or whatever. Like any, it's like feeling like I'm about to just like dive into something completely new. It's like you can never ask for anything else. I think every day is day one. Hundred percent. Amen. I appreciate you very much, dude. Thank you for having me and shit. Literally. <laughs> Anytime. Please come back for every feature release. Yeah. Door's always open. Really? Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I'm not in LA that much, but... No, like when you're back. And I'm not coming back. Wait, I will, <laughs> well, I'm coming back. I think I'm getting increasingly more into the idea of having like maybe like a tiny summer house here. Yes. But I'm also... I like not being in like the midst of, you know, LA stuff. I also like being in Europe. I think it's it brings... Balance. In a, yeah. Balance, exactly. Balance. Final thoughts? What are you thinking? Uh, the one other question I had was, your, when you had the vocal cord injury, does that affect how you make the music going forward, knowing you have to perform it on tour? Oh, n well, I th I never think about how I'm going to sing something, because I think, like, no, I don't think it's going to affect it, but it's pro I'm probably going to be like, oh my God, I can't sing this song. So I'm probably going to make something that I can't sing, because mm. um, I, I think, you know, I, I'm when I'm in the studio and I sing, I sing as like a, the producer and the creative person, not like the performer. Um, but there are certain songs on the record that I just like don't like playing because it was really hard to record. But you know, that's for the like recording. That's, I think, I don't know what I'm saying right now, but um, I don't know, but the vocal injury, like I'm still seeing like a speech therapist and like, I want to get better at singing. I don't want to like settle for mediocre shit, you know? Yeah, how frustrating is that as an artist that like your instrument like there's you can't there's some days you just can't do and you have to cancel shows that's it it's it really sucks because mentally i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna play for you but like that's like you know uh that's just like you can't do anything about it it's like your body and your mind are just like two separate things so like when you just can't you can't you know mm -hmm. And I'm seeing a lot of more people canceling recently, like yeah. Arlo Parks, Shawn Mendes, Justin Bieber, Demi Lovato was like, I'm not doing this anymore. So many people are like, they can't do it anymore. So it's taxing and it's hard, yeah. but it's also the main source of money for an artist. I know. So, but I'm balance. Yeah, it's, it's a balance, but it's all, I'm very ambivalent to touring. I think it's, I'm very in the middle, but it's always worth it when you go on stage and you just see all these like crazy fans losing their shit, you know? I mean, I was watching the uh, Coachella live stream that whole weekend and your yeah. performance was by far one of the best. Really? It was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. And th I actually had some upper respiratory infection and plus Coachella, honestly, like, I mean, I guess it's like a big festival, but shit, it was fucking dusty out there. Who yeah, the fuck gross. comes up with singers <laughs> in the fucking desert, you know? But what's really sad is like it starts with grass and then the people kick it all up and it turns to dust. Yeah, I guess. It's I disgusting. Mean, yeah, it's it was it, it was insane. Like you know, people were like wearing like masks and shit, and like Ugh. I was like coughing up like dust, and like my boogers were all black and shit. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> anyone disgusting. ask anyone who goes to Coachella, their boogers are black. Yeah, Ew. it's gross. Dirty boogers. <laughs> Listen to Listener girl and rides uh, music, please. Yes. There's a link in the description below. Uh, I really appreciate you being on. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you for having me. And uh, hanging out with us. Really, truly. Um, God, listen to the album. I'm sure you have, but you should listen to it again because it's always worth it. Um, if I can make it go quiet. Also, two other EPs out there. Yeah. And then there's some Norwegian stuff, but like, find it if you dare. Yeah. Thank exactly. You. Let me ask one last question. Do you think singing in Norwegian would work around the world? Like, do you think that would connect with people? In a way like K-pop has? Oh, interesting. No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so because uh, I don't know. I don't even know what language K-pop is because I'm so Korean. Uh, Korean? Okay. Uh, yeah, it could also J-pop is Japanese. probably a lot more Koreans than Norwegians too. So like, it's even yeah. like you you can you can barely get the you can't get the same hype. I think. But is it's it a like, beautiful sounding language? Mm, no. I don't think so. Got it. It's okay. So it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's really like la 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 la. Or so we said okay. No, see ya. No, on English. No, no. For kids, just we better go on a little tour. Uh, coast of Slitteran. I don't like that. I you don't like, like it? No, no. I mean, it's, you don't like that? I don't know. It's yeah. It's it's not that. It's you know. It's not like 
French, which is like really sexy. <laughs> that's a nice sexy face you put on. Was, you, was it? Yeah, your face matched. Yeah, but that's just because I'm really into French, you know. It's like, um, pour vivre ma fille, la fille d'un enfant. Is that's gr- not French. That's is your girlfriend gibberish. Norwegian? Yeah, she's Norwegian. And she has a really weird dialect. You would probably not like that one either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys just speak Norwegian to each other? Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, it's so it's hot, hot speaking to reach into each other. <laughs> really gets me going. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I feel like I. It's, it's good to have a Norwegian girlfriend. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I could have a French one too. You have many? Yeah, I'm so into that. No, you have I. An American I, one too. I no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I, draw the line. I, yeah, I, I don't think I can have an American girlfriend. Why? I think we operate on different emotional levels. <laughs> what is it about an American lady? Um, I don't know. Like, it needs to be like a really special American lady, because mm. I think I think we all like. I just think our re- realities are so different. You know, like, like, you know, I, I, when I see videos of like, like, hey, can you mention like one country outside of the US and they're like whoa like Detroit <laughs> like, like I'm like what what are you even talking about I don't know girl in red everybody yeah <laughs> you're the best I'm sorry okay have a good one guys 